Well, welcome, welcome back to another lovely podcast. Today, I'm going to do something totally different. I'm not going to talk about a bunch of games. I'm not going to talk about building consoles. I'm going to talk about one specific game. And the reason I'm going to kind of have a few podcasts where I just break down one game at a time is because um, recently I have revived my Xbox 360. I have uh, got a PS2 from a friend. I've mentioned this before. And my PS3, which has basically sat idle for you know, 10 years, I've revived that and started purchasing a ton of games, which you know, because I made all those podcasts about it. So the fact that I'm like reviving these consoles means I get to play some old games that I never did experience. So for me, it's the first time playing these games. And man, there are so many awesome older games out there that for me, just tapping into them for the first time, it's like a brand new experience. So today's episode is going to be about the video game Black, okay? I just also want to add in a disclaimer here about this game. It's my point of view that this game should be played by 18 years and over. So as I am suggesting how fun it is, I am suggesting it for people that are 18 and over, not for anybody under that age. Just want to make that clear. So I'm going to get my information from Wikipedia. I'm going to read you most of the details for this game and then just talk about my uh, feelings of this game so far. So first of all, Black is a first-person shooter video game. It's developed by Criterion Games. It's published by Electronic Arts. It was released for the PS2 and Xbox. It was later ported to the Xbox 360 via backwards compatibility. In the game, the player assumes control of Jack Keller, a black ops agent being interrogated about his previous missions involving a terrorist operation. Played from a first-person perspective, players confront enemies using firearms and grenades. The game is notable for its heavy, stylized cinema-inspired action, as well as its sound quality and focus on destructive effects during gameplay. Yeah, they're not, they're not lying there. It's like you're watching a movie. Black received generally positive reviews upon release. Critics praised the gameplay, sound design, and presentation, but criticized the game's short length and a lack of multiplayer. Okay, well, really, I, I don't play this game for multiplayer, and uh, I'm, a, I'm a parent, I'm a dad, I have one daughter, I have another one on the way. I don't mind playing a short game. The shorter, the better. At least I can finish something that's short. I don't want, you know, games that take days to complete. I don't have that kind of time. So that's what attracts me to this game as well. Not just how beautiful it is graphically for these systems like the PS2 and the Xbox, but it's the fact that the length is short. So, okay, it's achievable for me to finish this game. I'm also going to mention that it has, of course, uh, different um, levels of uh, difficulty. So it has easy, medium, and hard, something like that. So I, I'm right now I'm playing on easy because I just want to have fun with the game. I'm not interested in, you know pretending I'm a real black ops agent. So I'm fine with easy. Okay, so let's talk about other things on this game. Um, I'm gonna get a little bit into the story, but I'm not gonna read the whole story. It was a long, long story. So I'll get into the first couple paragraphs just to, just to give you a taste in case you haven't ever played this game. Uh, black takes place in Ingushetia and Chechnya, Russia. The protagonist is a black ops operative, operative named Sergeant First Class Jack Keller, portrayed by Marty Papazian. Keller tells most of the story in first person at an interrogation four days after the events in the story begin. Keller is an inadequately disciplined member of a CIA black ops unit and a veteran of several conflicts, including Guatemala, Colombia, Iran, and Croatia. The unknown interrogator portrayed by Paul Pape, questions Keller about an armed smuggling and terrorist operation called the Seventh Wave, who have been responsible for a number of terrorist attacks. Keller is told that unless he cooperates, he and his actions will be declassified, meaning he will be convicted at court-martial, dishonorably discharged, and imprisoned for life. Though initially resistant, Keller at least agrees to tell his story. And that's where the game picks up. Then you get right into the game, and man, is it ever enjoyable. Let's talk a little bit about the gameplay. 
It's essentially a straightforward first-person shooter. Players can only carry two weapons at a time, therefore strategy is needed when choosing weaponry, with weapons differing in characteristics. The player can also carry grenades, which can be thrown without switching weapons. Landmines and grenades can be detonated prematurely by shooting them. The game is mission-based, with each mission separated by a cutscene video. On harder difficulties, there are more objectives that must be completed before the player can progress. These extra objectives involve collecting various intelligence documents, blueprints, or destroying parts of the environment. These are all indicated by the HUD crosshair changing color when the player points at the relevant object. Successful completion, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Successful completion of the objectives over all missions in all difficulties above easy results in the awarding of the silver weapons, infinite bullets, and unlocking the M16 a2 40 millimeter underslung grenade launcher attachment as the starting default weapon with infinite 40 millimeters grenades when unlocked these features are permanent and cannot be removed without starting a fresh story line oh oh my goodness it is great um I will, i'm gonna skip one section here and i just want to talk a little bit about the sound Emphasizing the game's action film heritage, sound effects for the weapons in the game were based on various sounds from films. For example, Bruce Willis's Heckler and Kosh MP5 in Die Hard, Jack Bauer's Pistol in 24, and Arnold Schwarzenegger's Uzi in True Lies. Pretty cool. Realizing in the chaos of a heavy gun battle, the heavy mix of sound and music would produce a cacophony, cacophony of noise, the sound designers developed the choir of guns concept. Whereas traditionally in a shooter game, game, each weapon model would be assigned a different sound, Black assigns each enemy their own voice, similar to the way in which each member of a choir would have their own distinct voice. For example, there are three enemies firing. One would be assigned a low voice, another a medium voice, and the third a high voice. This allows all the weapons being fired in any particular scene to harmonize and deliver a distinct sound for the game. Black Sound was nominated for Best Audio at the 2006 BAFTA Video Games Awards and won Best Art and Sound jointly with Burnout Revenge, another game by Criterion, at the 2006 Develop Industry Excellence Awards. Music for Black was composed by Chris Tilton using a theme co-authored with Oscar-winning composer Michael Gia, Gia, Giacchino or Giacchino. It was recorded at the Newman scoring stage. Okay, so let's look at some of the uh, the reception here, some of the ratings. Uh, Metacritic for the PS2 gives it a 79 out of 100, and Xbox gets 77 out of 100. And the scores from all the other um, from all the publications they rate from like a 6.83 all the way up to 8.5 out of 10. So the marks go from like, if we're going percentage, 63% to 85%. Now let's get on to the last part of the Wikipedia article about this. It's called Future. In an interview, co-creator and designer Stuart Black revealed that plans for Black 2 were underway, but are now scrapped due to differences with electronic arts. Stuart Black and many of the developers of Black work on sorry, the many developers of Black worked on the now released Body Count, a spiritual successor to the game which developed was developed by Codemasters and was released on the Xbox 360 and PS3 during quarter three, 2011. All right, so and there's a really nice detailed description of the game that I am just like quite enjoying. Uh, I believe I played this on Game Pass, but when I, I didn't continue my subscription to Game Pass, uh, I decided I wanted to buy the game so then I can take as long as I want to play it. And yes, I got it because it's a fast game to play, but I don't always have a, a lot of time to play it. So it could still take me a, a while. Just a, I could just only imagine how some of those longer first person shooter games, how long they're going to take me to play Anyway, I am on like I think mission two of the game so far, and I just it's just so fun. Uh, I'm going to tell you how much I paid for it. I bought it on eBay. I got it for sixteen dollars and twenty five cents. So there's going to be people listening to this that think uh, I definitely might have overpaid, uh, but um, it was worth it to me. I'm I'm not big on um, 
subscribing to some a monthly service like Game Pass. So to me, if I could just spend 16 bucks once on the game and you know, I'm not putting a constant amount of money into Game Pass every month. Uh, it, it, it's a bonus for me because I'm not going to play all those games on Game Pass um, thoroughly, you know, long enough to really uh, make it worth it for me. So, yeah, I bought it for $12.25 plus $4 shipping off eBay uh, for the PS2. I was just really like how it plays on the PS2. It's it's a lot of fun. Smooth. Um, I don't think you get to run. The character doesn't run. But uh, he moves at a good enough pace. You can do all the same things you do in other first-person shooters. Crouch and prone. Uh, but um, I don't think jumping is available. Zooming. Changing weapons. Uh, you get health packs that you can like give yourself more health if you're if you're losing out on health so you have to be smart about when you do that and uh yeah um other than that i am i'm just thoroughly impressed by this game i highly recommend if you are if you've never played this you know get into it buy yourself a copy or if you have game pass and it could be on ps now but i can't i haven't never looked for it on ps now yeah if if you want to just try it out on game pass just like give this game a shot it is fantastic i don't know why i'm not a big fan of first person shooters and i'm horrible at warzone and uh for some reason this game just really catches my attention so maybe it's the fact that it's got those great cutscenes in it maybe it's the fact that i feel like i'm a little bit more skilled at this game than other first person shooters I also told you, like, I know I feel like I can finish this game in a faster time than I can other first-person shooters out there. So 100% check it out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's it for today. Just one game. That's all I talked about. One. But that was so fun. All right, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs>